Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're looking at a Kenmore. And what the problem is, is the timer will not advance. And so, what I did was I took the timer apart. <clears throat> now, this video is for informational purposes only. If you need a professional, contact your local professional directly. I can coach you over the phone for a fee uh, if you call me. So we see burnt areas here along the timer front panel area. And then if we look in here, we can see there's burnt points up in here. So I will clean these up with a uh, emery cloth would be uh, ideal. Uh, light sandpaper, fingernail file might work. And then I'll also close the tolerances a, a little bit here and here with a needle nose. Press them together just slightly, not very much at all, just slightly. Okay, so the procedure for Putting this or taking this off is basically remove the two screws and then turn the timer slightly as you pull out gently. And that's how to remove it. Now I've already cleaned this up inside here um, and put grease, uh, a small amount of grease on the whatever the elbows here for the cog. And so the technique is basically to look at the timer here and you'll see that there are more sort of elbows on this side. So we need, we're going to put in the timer this side and then pull it back slightly and then it will, it should go in fairly easily. So we start on the edge where there's no uh, mechanisms and then push it back slightly and then turn it slightly. And we want, we're looking for this silver panel to run flush with this without um, any tension. So basically it should be flush without you squeezing it. And so what I found out was I was getting power to the timer motor um, terminals. It's a 110 volt timer on this. This is the timer here in the center. And so there's your disclaimer. And I was lucky enough to have another timer console that I scrapped out from another part, uh, dryer. Very similar. And so what I did was I pulled this timer motor off. And then I set it up on a MacGyver 110 line. And I marked the the gears with a felt pin so I can watch it move. Now this top one here will be rotating counterclockwise. This bottom one here will be rotating clockwise. This top one here uh, moves about two notches every time this bottom one moves about three or four times. So this one is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this old one out, which incidentally I tried the same thing on and didn't have any luck with it. It wouldn't move. None of the terminals, uh, the cogs in here moved at all. You can see I marked them and left it on for 20 minutes and they didn't move at all. So what I'll do is take that motor from a scrapped out machine and put it in here and fix the timer. 
If you can make me a donation, your donations help support reuse and recycling worldwide. Please send it to Bill's Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. Z underscore fixitman at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching.